Welcome back to another episode of the Invest.Classroom, Classroom, where today we will be talking about spot Bitcoin ETFs, the latest product capturing the financial world's attention. What are these ETFs? How do they work? And what do they mean for investors and the broad cryptocurrency market amid fluctuating Bitcoin prices and frankly evolving regulations? We'll explore the significance of these products. What are some of the big industry players saying? And what's the practical impact on the crypto market as a whole? Now, Luke, many people are saying this is a pivotal moment in crypto's history. And the big question for investors broadly is that how should investors implement these uh, in their investment strategies overall? And I think the, the, that's the main question for uh, everybody is, is this the shining moment that brings the crypto industry into the fold of the traditional financial sector? Well, I think it's important to contextualize the event mm -hmm. and to think about what it is and, and what it isn't. What mm -hmm. does approval mean? Mm -hmm. uh, what is a Bitcoin ETF? So when people traditionally think of, BT, of ETFs, they think about passive investment vehicles, or maybe even active investment vehicles that are invested in equities or bonds or commodities that have a strict set of regulations that govern how you hold, what you can hold, how you go about trading, and what the prices mean. And so that's not what this is for cryptocurrency. It, it's essentially what the SEC said when they approved these is our hands were tied. We wish we didn't have to, but yeah. here we are. Yeah. And this is in no way an endorsement uh, of these vehicles. So I think the first thing you have to do as an investor is realize that what traditionally has been meant by ETF, exchange traded fund, uh, doesn't necessarily mean the same thing for, for the Bitcoin spot ETF. Yeah, I think it's an important distinction uh, to understand how regulators are viewing this. It, it's pretty clear by what the SEC has said before and after that this is not a full-throated endorsement of the sector, the asset class as a whole, um, and that they are skeptical of it, uh, along with many of the players. Talk about Vanguard avoiding uh, launching their own ETF uh, in this space. And it's pretty clear that the experts don't think that this is an asset class for the average person because of the historical volatility and the lack of really anything backing it, right? This mm -hmm. is, at the end of the day, this is bits in the sky. This is just simply a ledger. And, you know, I think there's some value in that and that proof of work. Uh, and it's a new technology that still, I think, needs to be proven out in its ability uh, to withstand all different types of market environments, uh, regulatory scrutiny, and potentially security issues as well. And so uh, for the average person, uh, this is something that maybe they should consider, but it certainly is not for everybody, right? Now, Justin, moving past industry opinions, regulatory opinions, a, a pressing question emerges. And important, how suitable are these ETFs for the average investor? The backdrop of potential bit Bitcoin volatility and debates really about the sustainability of mining itself and therefore the sustainability of the network mm -hmm. uh, is an important question. It's important that investors think critically through decision-making frameworks considering their risk appetites and their investment profiles before they consider adding any of this stuff to their allocation. Yeah, because one consistent theme we've seen throughout our history of being advisors, talking to clients, is that people make rash decisions. Mm -hmm. They use their emotions to drive their decision-making process. And unfortunately, that leads them to bad decisions. Mm -hmm. They tend to buy high and they sell low, right? They chase returns and then when things get volatile, mm -hmm. they sell, usually at the worst time. And in a very volatile asset class like crypto and even Bitcoin, even though it's the steadiest of them all, it's still very volatile. Mm -hmm. um, it's clear that the average person is very susceptible to this in this particular asset class. Yes, you can have near-term amazing returns, 
but it can easily crash 70, 80% in a relatively short period of time like it has before. Um, and we'll show this next chart and it really is showing the correlation between the Bitcoin price and M2 money growth, global M2 money supply. And so the whims of central bankers and governments around the world have a strong influ influence on where Bitcoin prices will go. And so if that's the case, you have to take that into consideration, A, and know that going forward, there's going to be extreme volatility that you will face. And can you handle it? And most people will say that now, right? They'll say- Everyone uh, loves the upside of volatility. Everyone loves the upside of volatility. But when you are faced mm -hmm. with red on your screen and typically red happens fast you know it's the stair step up and the elevator down is the old analogy and that's the same with crypto it goes down fast when liquidity ebbs and so if you're looking to buy these this etf and add this asset class to your portfolio you have to be very very comfortable with that volatility and know that that is going to come and if you have in the past bought other equities that have dropped 70, 80%. What did you do? Did you panic and run for the hills? Or did you kind of hold through because you were happy with the, the business? In this case, you're going to be, have to be very happy with owning Bitcoin mm -hmm. and crypto longer term. And if you're not, you're going to fall prey to this pattern, which is buy high and sell low. And, and typically, when you have a launch of an ETF like this, there's the market there's a reason bitcoin has gone up over the past year or so part of its liquidity but a lot of it is speculation around the launch of these etfs and so typically these mark more of a near-term high in price as opposed to a great buying opportunity yeah and certainly understanding suitability of the asset class is important but it's also understanding how much you're willing to risk as well. Given how volatile this is, you shouldn't put yourself in a situation where you're hiding from your loved ones how much yeah. money you just lost in crypto. Yeah, this isn't even, where you put your down payment for a house. Exactly, <laughs> even with the recent run up in prices, which we'll talk about a little bit later, it's important to note that a lot of people still bought Bitcoin at 20,000 higher than, than where it was in February. Mm -hmm. So certainly given the dynamics of the market, it's just as important to understand, is it right for me as it is to understand how much it's right for me. Yeah, and don't chase the, the shiny object is what I always say. And right now, Bitcoin and these ETFs are definitely the shiny object that uh, not just investors are, are going after, but the investment community with how many, there's about a dozen or so mm -hmm. spot Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, and they're all chasing for the investment dollar. And so there's going to be a lot of advertisements and you know, in many ways they're pitching to the boomer generation mm -hmm. because younger people tend to adopt it more. The boomer generation, they don't. But guess what? Who has all the money? <laughs> all the dollars, mm -hmm. the, the, the boomer generation. So, um, and then it goes back to the question is, is this a right for you if you're in retirement? Is this type of volatility right for you? Maybe for a very small slice of your portfolio, but anything significant, probably not. Now, shifting our focus a little bit to the tangible effects that the approval of these spot ETFs have had on the price of Bitcoin itself, you see by this chart that we're showing here that in the month preceding the approval by the SEC, there's been a decent run up, uh, certainly for Bitcoin standards as well. Uh, in, in the price. And going back even further a year uh, beyond what this chart shows, it bottomed out at what, 16 to 19,000 somewhere? somewhere I think it was around. a little lower. I think it was around 12 or 13. Yeah. Maybe maybe 12 or 13. I'm not yeah. sure if it got that low, but it yeah. certainly was below 20,000 mm -hmm. and had a little bit of run up uh, ahead due to speculation about approval. Uh, but right after it was approved, if I recall. There was a little bit of a dump. There's actually an incident where someone hacked the Twitter account of the SEC and mm -hmm. said there was approval and then the price dropped off. And But it's been steadily climbing ever since. And what do you think, how do you think this correlates to similar events that have happened in the past? Do you think this price action now is more indicative of what you can expect going forward? What are your, what are your thoughts on that? 
Well, there was certainly that buy the rumors, sell mm-hmm. the news type of uh, event that happened in the week or two after. Mm-hmm. Um, but since then, prices have gone up. Uh, and, uh, you know, you showed that that chart of the price uh, one month post really, uh, you know, right now it's around 50,000. I think when it was approved, it was around 43,000, if I remember correctly. Something around there. Something yeah. around there. Um, so, you know, it's it just shows you there's there's going to be a lot of volatility, you know, 10% drop, 20% rally. Uh, and it, it's going to certainly ebb and flow based on the liquidity dynamics, like we said. Um, now, history shows that any any theme that is sexy uh, tends to get a lot of money flows. Mm-hmm. Uh, but over time, it's about the fundamentals that ultimately support the asset class. And, you know, I, that's why I want to show this next chart, which is transactions per day of, uh, of, uh, of the Bitcoin blockchain. And you can see it's been trending up over time, but over the past couple of years, it's been volatile, but relatively sideways. So um, this is something that you're, we're going to have to follow to see how much true adoption there is, because you can make as many arguments as you want about the validity and, and uh, viability of Bitcoin. But unless people eventually start to use it beyond just speculation, uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of value there. You know, right now there's a lot of uh, foreign co- countries, and I think that's where the best value is. Is everyone talks about the U.S. and our central bank and how you know they print money, et cetera. But compared to the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. Were the dollar is the reserve currency. Yeah, yeah, but also the actions of our central bank are a lot more responsible than, say, many South American countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and down there, you see inflation at hundreds, if not thousands of percent. And so for those countries, Bitcoin is actually a, a, a relatively good store of value. It's actually less volatile <laughs> than their own currency, mm-hmm. right? And so I think that's really where the best use case is today. Um, and will that continue to be the case? Does this kind of push those central banks to be a bit more conservative? Um, or uh, you know, will our central banks can go the way of the South American countries? I think that will be, from a long-term perspective, uh, the deciphering factor of how well these technologies are truly adopted, not adopted for speculation's sake, but for actual end use cases. Mm-hmm. That about sums up our discussion on the new spot Bitcoin ETFs. And I think we've left you all with a lot to consider on whether Bitcoin ETFs are right for your portfolio. And if you thought that this helped you along your investment journey, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and join us daily at the Invest Talk podcast. Thank you.